stinging the hell out of your hands, isn't it? <laughs> man up, Flip. Woo! Man, that does not look like it's coming at you that fast on TV. Yeah. Or even in the stadium. That's freaking awesome. Woo! Yeah! Routine. Yeah. So, the little drop ball that I do, it's just something cool, something to have. Spin it, drop it, it'll normally land somewhere like that on turf, it might spin a little bit. And then, the walk back is just to kind of simulate going from a huddle to a regular snap. So it's like, get the huddle call, break the huddle, walk up, step, step, just kind of a... I used to work with Corey Adams, who's a longtime K-State snapper, and that's what he did. He was the best long snapper when he came out for the NFL. and So I kind of just started emulating him, and I got to a rhythm. And suck the ball, and then snap it. So kind of catch a little rhythm. The Twin Valley Locker Room Show takes you to Auto Under Stadium in a conversation with the former Clay Center Tiger in Decon, Dalton Converse. Twin Valley Locker Room Show is powered by Pulse Internet. All your devices, one superior connection. Former Clay Center Tiger, as mentioned, former K-State Wildcat. I know you were talking, you and I were talking before coming on, uh, not being a Wildcat anymore. I understand you're always a Wildcat. Mm -hmm. But to be considered now a former K-State Wildcat football player, is it, is it sinking in? Uh, it hadn't really sank in yet. Um... I went up to the complex the other day, saw my teammates walking out for a workout. They were all dressed out in all their new workout gear. I was in jeans, boots, coat, hat, just going in, kind of seeing what was going on. And it didn't really feel real like I should still be with them, it felt like. So still not yet sunk in. For some, it's hard not to imagine you playing out on this football field as well here at Auto Wonder Stadium. I want to talk about your start with K-State. I know you're a walk-on, become a scholarship player starting long snapper, but it really began for you as far as on-field time at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. Uh, I was there. I know your family's gone to, to so many of your events. As I started to hear the news, it was that afternoon when I officially was told by your dad that uh, Dalton's going to be long snapping today. And so all of us are thinking and talking and hearts racing a little bit. For you, what was it like to step on that field and that atmosphere for your first ever collegiate long snap? Well, I knew that I was going to long snap about two, two and a half weeks before the game started. So I prepared a lot, did a lot of preparation, um, snapped probably two, three hundred snaps every day at practice. And we had 14 practice leading up to that. And then I snapped a lot at home. Like we were talking earlier, put a wall in the basement of my house snapping. Um, but nothing really prepares you from going from playing in front of 1,500 people in Clay Center, Kansas to... 92,000 and national television in Dallas Cowboy Stadium. I mean, it was a good experience, but I don't think enough preparation in the world can get you ready for that transition. I would imagine not. And I'm guessing, was it almost, I, I guess for those of us watching and helping you all we could from the stands and, and on TV, was it a bit of a relief when that first one was over? The first one of every game is a relief. I mean, no matter whether it's my first snap against Arkansas or my last snap in the Liberty Bowl against Arkansas, that first snap of every game is always a relief. You always need to get the first one out of the way, get those game jitters, because they never go away when you're playing in front of that many people with that much on the line. It's always a good feeling to get that first one back there. I can imagine. Started his college career against the Razorbacks, finished against the Razorbacks in two different bowl games. All right. Um, I'm going to jump ahead. You're a scholarship player. Start as a walk-on. You fight your way. And, and I know there were some times it was frustrating. It was tough. You're a, you're a standout in Clay Center, both sides of the football. Now you got to go and try to you work your way into some kind of position. How tough was that adjustment early on for you? The adjustment was really tough. I mean, I, like you said, I went from being big fish in a small pond to not even being a minnow in a lake. I mean... And that's what a lot of people, that's what you get told. It's like you might have been the big dog at your place, but you're nothing here. You're a young and you need to work hard, you need to learn, and that's exactly what I did. And there were a lot of tough times, a lot of times where I wanted to quit, but my family support and friends, I kept pushing through, kept pushing through, and 
it eventually paid off, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. I want to talk a little bit about the, the final game at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. Um, senior day, a lot of us again were there. I know your parents were there. I guess first off, I'm going to give you a multiple choice question. <laughs> Most emotional on that day, and at any point or throughout, was it AU, B mom, or C dad? Oh, C dad, easy. <laughs> the amount of effort and heart and everything that he puts in to my games, he, I think he cares about it more than I do. I mean, not that I don't care about it, but how bad he wants me to succeed is unreal, and I can't thank him enough for that. I had a feeling that was the answer, but I was going to let you answer it for sure and make sure that was the case or not. Uh, can you share with us what Coach Snyder said before you made your run out in front of the crowd cheering? He just... It was really a once-in-a-lifetime experience, something that you'll never forget. It. He, I can remember we shook hands, and he pulled me in for a hug, and he said, you're a fantastic person. I can't think of anybody else who worked like you did. You've done so much for this program, and you'll be missed. Thank you. And did, you did you float out to meet your family? I mean, I, I can only imagine what that must feel like. Yeah, the hearing the roar of the crowd and hearing your name over it and everything and running down and seeing your parents and mom and dad are grinning ear, ear to ear and you can see it from the goal line and they were down on the opposite 20. It was a great experience. Um, as you uh, make your way now to the next steps coming up, uh, what is in line for Decon and, and whether it be in football or beyond that? Well, right now I'm hanging out around Clay Center for right now. Um, working out. I actually got invited out to a pro specialist combine in Arizona through Cole's Kicking. The head director of the snapping department contacted me and invited me out and that's February 14th and 15th so I'll be down in Arizona and so right now I'm training for that and then we have K-State Pro Day which is the second Thursday of March and so basically working towards that and then if nothing pans out for football um, I've already been accepted into Cleveland Chiropractic College, and I'll start that in September. Keeping the tradition going, right? Yep. Um, we have Dalton Converse Decon with us as we get set to kind of wrap up on, on this interview. I've got a few quick, rapid questions I'll ask in a moment. We do a thing called Tiger Talk, maybe about football, may not. So we'll have that in just a moment. Oh, there's two more things I want to talk about. The special units crew, you guys work together as we watch you on the sidelines and then on the field. I mean, it's obviously a family feeling you guys have you made some really close friends to that group haven't you oh yeah oh yeah my one of my best friends he's back home in Dallas now um and actually two of my friends are down in Dallas uh the two kids that I came in with Jack uh Contelli and Dylan Wilson they both Jack accepted a job offer in Texas and Dylan just is from Texas and so uh we became really close friends I always talk to them every day it's definitely a brotherhood between those guys and I still talk to the guys who are still there now. I mean, it's definitely, we fought like brothers. We had fun like brothers. It's a family atmosphere for sure. It, it was so fun to watch you guys get it done down the stretch and get that sixth win and uh, become bowl eligible. I could see the relief on his face. You could hear it uh, as he sighed thinking, yes, finally. Um, okay, Tiger Talk, real quickly. Of the special teams players, some we talked about, mm -hmm. which of those special teams players is the best golfer? Oh, best golfer. You got Jack, who's – when he plays, he's really good. He's a scratch golfer when he actually has time to play. And then Nick Walsh is just a good athlete. He's good at everything. So, or And I'm not bad, I guess, too. I'm not too bad. And so I'd say between one of those three, but Jack probably has the upper hand. All right. I'll take Dal Dalton any time, though, on the golf course, trust me. Of all the road trips in the Big 12, least favorite place to go, and then I'll follow it up with a favorite place to go. Lubbock, Texas, easy. Lubbock, there's nothing to do in Lubbock. It's <laughs> ugly. Going to the stadium, it's nothing but cotton fields and rundown buildings, and Lubbock is just not a nice place to be, in my opinion. And most favorite place to go in the Big 12, not, not Bill Snyder Family Stadium. Mm, that's tough. Between, I like TCU Stadium. TCU has an awesome stadium. They have a great hotel where we stayed, awesome food. Um, but as far as getting there and driving around and stuff like that, definitely West Virginia. Beautiful mountain country. It's As an outdoorsman, I can I like it. It's nice. I have to make you tell one quick story about TCU. Surprising chant was heard in a pregame at TCU, right, for your mom? Was that TCU? 
where the the TCU fans were chanting your mom's oh. name. Oh my, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> in front of the uh, TCU student section is the K State bench. And what they'd do is they'd pull out their smartphones and go onto Facebook. They'd have the roster and the program, and they'd look up, oh, Dalton Converse. Look me up on Facebook. Oh, his mom's Tammy Converse. And so, Tammy Converse. (laughs) And so I'd turn around, and they're all like, yeah, we know who you are. We got you. We got your number, dude. It's like, all right, take it easy. And then they started getting other teammates and stuff, but Tammy Converse was a popular (laughs) chant that night. Uh, that was so funny when to hear your mom tell that story, too. And it may be even funnier for Dalton to tell it in all reality. Okay, what feels better? Last question. A long snap right on the money or a birdie putt falling in? That's tough. That's two different feelings. Um, when it's in front of 90,000 people on national television, I'd have to say definitely a long snap right to the punter's hands. But when it's just me, Dad, and... Maybe a couple friends, definitely a birdie putt. I like it. Dalton, best of luck with all that's to come for you, whether it be on a pro football field or uh, working in chiropractic. I know you're going to do some great stuff. We appreciate the time. Fun to see the Tigers mm-hmm. and the uh, the Wildcats gear behind us. This is an actual game helmet? Yep, game helmet for five years. This is Decon, Tiger legend and former K-State Wildcat, Dalton Converse, on the Twin Valley Locker Room Show.